score presentation starts selling on Amazon now. Uh, that is being presented by Score Southeast New Jersey. Uh, my name is Tony Masseroli. I am the chair, uh, chapter chairman for Score Southeast New Jersey. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we'll be going through the uh, the presentation today. I just want to say a, a couple of things. Everyone will be receiving a copy of the presentation, so don't worry about, um, you know, if you um, see something on the screen, don't worry about copying that down uh, because you will receive a copy of the presentation. And uh, we're going to use the chat uh, function. So if you have questions during the presentation, you can type it in the chat. We're going to I'm going to try to hold all the questions till the end. Um, but, um, you, you know, if you have something, uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye on the chat and, uh, hopefully, uh, we can get to those as we go through. Okay. So, uh, our agenda today, a little bit about score, uh, want to talk about why Amazon, um, we want to talk about seller central, which is the portal into Amazon, um, listing products, the three P's of success um fulfillment uh, how do you get your products delivered to your customers uh, hopefully we'll have some some time for some q a and uh just a disclaimer i do mention some specific products uh our score um rules um forbid me from endorsing anyone but uh, any one product but uh, i i do want to use a few as uh, as examples of of what can be done So a little bit about SCORE. So our mission is to uh, foster vibrant small business communities. And uh, we, we synthesize two uh, historic national ideals, entrepreneurial spirit and volunteerism. Uh, everyone, most everyone, uh, SCORE is a fairly large organization as, as uh, we have 10, as you can see, we have 10,000 plus um, volunteer mentors. Uh, it is a large organization. We are a, a nonprofit funded by the U.S. government, but there are only about 40 or 50 full-time employees. The rest of the organization is all volunteers. SCORE has been a nonprofit organization since 1964, and since that time, we've uh, assisted more than 11 million entrepreneurs starting and growing their businesses. And, and in just last year, uh, clients started uh, over 30,000 businesses and created uh, 112,000 jobs. Uh, SCORE's services are all free. Uh, some, some chapters do charge a, a, a small fee um, for, for webinars or workshops. We, we don't. Uh, everything that we do is free. Our services are uh, mentoring. Uh, we have a library of online resources that you can access for free, uh, webinars and courses on demand, and we do local events, seminars, and workshops. We do we do these webinars, but we also do workshops uh, in the Ocean County Library System uh, live as live workshops. Uh, some um, resources for you. The SCORE website is uh, score.org forward slash Southeast New Jersey. Um, you can find a mentor at score.org forward slash find dash mentor if you want help uh, with your business or working on, you know, um, help help you getting started selling on Amazon, selling your products or selling third party products. Uh, we have, uh, as I mentioned, we have a um, YouTube channel where we we will uh, have the recording of this presentation as well as some of the others that we've done. We do have two Facebook groups. <coughs> excuse me, um, and um, a LinkedIn group. We also have a radio program, which is Score Business Points. It's on educational radio, 91.9 FM. Uh, it's hosted by one of our mentors, Michael Pappas. And it's on Saturday mornings at 9.30 a.m. And a rebroadcast re re Sundays at 7 a.m. There is, If you go to the website, there is also a uh, an archive of past shows so you can uh, find other other topics than um, pretty much any topic that you that you're looking for um that used to be me uh, i'm a bit older now um my background is a 35 plus year career in uh, software development and technology management all in the financial services realm um my 
core competencies are strategic planning, leadership development. I've done a lot of turnarounds in my career and operations management. Uh, I've also done uh, startups. I've started up uh, a couple of companies during that period. And uh, I've also worked for some of the largest uh, financial services companies in, in the world. I have been a certified SCORE mentor for the last seven years. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm the chapter chairman for SCORE Southeast New Jersey. So why Amazon? Amazon is the second largest company in the United States. It has a revenue of $524.9 billion in the last 12 months. That accounts for about 2.5% of the U.S. GDP. Uh, the only company that is larger at this point than Amazon is, um, drew a blank, uh, I'll, I'll get there. It, it'll come to me. Uh, Amazon is uh, is the number two most trusted Walmart. Walmart, sorry, Walmart is the largest customer, uh, l largest company in America. America. Uh, so Amazon's the number two most trusted brand in the U.S. Um, interesting. Interestingly, seventy five percent of shoppers use Amazon to discover new products and brands, and fifty two percent of shoppers are more willing to buy an unfamiliar brand in Amazon's store. Um, you know, I, I recently bought some uh, s some fishing shorts on, on Amazon from a company called Little Donkey Andy. Uh, little little strange name, but I trusted that company because I I trust Amazon. And when you sell on Amazon, that cachet that Amazon has um, accrues to you and to your selling. So uh, they and and the reason for that is they have a a, um, a stellar reputation for customer service and for perks. And Amazon has invested over nine hundred million since twenty twenty one to protect customers and sellers from counterfeit, fraud, and other forms of abuse. So the people that that shop on Amazon uh, are highly trust uh, trusting of Amazon and the other sellers and resellers that are on there. And as you can see here, this is Amazon's growth over the last dozen or so years. Uh, and it is uh, it it is quite the his, uh, quite the um, hockey stick, uh, as people say, as far as earnings are concerned. Now, most companies don't get to realize that type of growth, but Amazon Amazon has done that and continues to grow, which is one of the reasons why why you want to be there. So, it's the number one website in the world. Amazon actually owns fifty two percent of the total e commerce market. So think of all the other websites that sell stuff. Amazon has 52% of that entire market. They have 300 million active, <clears throat> excuse me, active customers, over 42 million unique desktop, and almost 130 million unique mobile users every month. And in Amazon's B2B, if you're a B2B person, Amazon's B2B e-commerce channel has a million accounts, about 150,000 sellers, and more than 10 billion in global revenue. The big news though for small, uh, yes, I see I see that the uh, there, there is a, uh, a question in the chat, will this be recorded and shared? Yes, we are recording and we will send out a copy of the presentation. So the, the big news for, for everybody on this call is that small to medium business sellers had average sales of $160,000 in 2022. So there is so while there's a lot of competition on Amazon, and we'll go into some of that, um, there is still tremendous amount of opportunity. So how do you get started? So you may have heard of this, but the way to get started to becoming an Amazon seller is Amazon Seller Central. And just like creating an account on Amazon as a consumer, you can create an account on Amazon to be a seller. You just go to Seller Central or down, you scroll down to the bottom of, of any Amazon page and they have, there's probably a link there to sell on Amazon. Uh, and on Amazon Seller Central, you can list your products, you can update product info, track your sales, track payments, um, get reports, uh, and they have a, a wealth of tools that can help you manage and, and grow your business. Also, that's where you can monitor your customer feedback and reviews. 
Um, access to Amazon Seller Central is through a web interface or through a free app. Um, the first thing you do is choose a selling plan as there's an, an individual plan, which is pay, pay as you go. And that's 99 cents per item, but there are no fees until something sells, then it's 99 cents per sale. And, and then the professional account is a monthly subscription fee of $39.99 per month. Now that is one a one-time fee that you pay every month. And it doesn't matter if you sell 10,000 products, it's still $39.99 a month for your Amazon Central account. You can you it, it provides you with a dashboard, which you can customize with the tools that you use most often. Uh, you can manage your inventory and fulfillment, and you can use a drop-down menu, menu to access account information. Now, uh, another disclaimer here, under both, so that's not the only charge that you pay on Amazon. Under both plans, Amazon charges additional referral fees on sales, and we'll go into that a little bit. Okay, what are the three Ps to uh, selling success on Amazon? Well, the first one is product selection. Um, you know, some, some of you may be looking at this as selling your own products, and, and, and the... Um, the presentation is is applicable to that because we're going to talk about how to list product, how to promote them, et cetera. But if you are solely looking at acquiring products to sell at Amazon, then a, a, a big consideration for you uh, and and a big um, a big factor in your success will be product selection. Uh, how you promote your products, obviously. Um, you know, Amazon is is doing a lot of the work for you. As we mentioned, they're bringing in uh, almost two hundred, almost two hundred million um, unique accounts through both the the, uh, the uh, through both desktop and um, and mobile channels. And so there are customer. There are you know obviously a tremendous number of customers coming every month, but you have to get their attention to get them to look at your product. And of course, pricing. Uh, pricing is, is, uh, is an important consideration. And we'll, we'll talk about uh, some, of the, uh, some of the things that go into pricing and, and how, how things are priced on Amazon and also competition. Okay, so the first P is um, what products do you wanna sell and where can you find them? So you can find products pretty much anywhere. Um, as, as it says here, the trash, your closet, retail stores, uh, craft shows, discount retailers, um, also uh, wor world-class manufacturers. There, there are manufacturers that will allow you to buy their products in wholesale and sell them on, sell them on Amazon. And uh, this, uh, what, we, what you see here is the screen for uh, ThomasNet. And ThomasNet is a uh, is a uh, a website that that find that will help you find suppliers and uh, sourcing in the United States. And there are others. We'll we'll go into uh, we'll we'll go into others. So you can also do uh, existing products, um, private label products. You can go to you can you know there there are um, for instance you can sell you know there's a lot of companies which will provide you with water bottles and water bottles are an easy easily private label um you know made into a private label product with your with your label and to your specifications you can also sell used items on amazon books puzzles games as long as they got all the pieces you you can sell games there uh vintage items are that vintage selling vintage items on amazon is is a huge market and very lucrative Uh, the, the part of it, it, there is a strategy though, to, to product selection and, you know, what you're going to want to do is, uh, come up with a strategy. And I'm going to go into that in, in, in a couple of slides. There, there are many, many different strategies that you can use for the types of products or the way that you want to sell on Amazon. But within that, um, within that uh, that product set, you want to generate a list of, this is a, you know, this is a general uh, strategy here, generate a list of 
potential products to sell. And then you want to validate that with more vigorous analysis. So you want to, you, you know, you want to look who else is, is selling it on Amazon? What are they selling it for? Um, and then there are tools to help you do that. Some of them are free, some are paid. We're going to go through, uh, we're going to go through some of those. Um, and just a note, some products have selling restrictions on Amazon. So you can't sell alcohol, tobacco, fine art, automotive, drugs. Uh, some, some products Amazon reserves for themselves, like the, the entire automotive market is, is reserved for Amazon to sell, to sell themselves. Okay, here's a couple of examples of product strategies that, that people have used. So the first one is uh, sales or competition based. So um, this is, you, you wanna look for popular products on Amazon that are not too competitive. So, do, and, and the, the underlying strategy here is, does the market have room for you to sell a, sell a product in this space and make a profit? So maybe you look in, at products that have less than three main sellers, but still has thousands of monthly sales. Um, and you want to use, and there are tools that you can use to help you with that. So one of them is uh, helium black to helium 10 black box extension. So that's a free extension that you can put on Chrome and you can, it uses Amazon data, uh, and they verify and track product sales. You can sales spread across the top 10 sellers. There are a lot of different search criteria, and we have an example that we're going to go into. Uh, another strategy is sales rank based. This is another person who now, when you talk about a category, so category might be, um, you know, might be um, health and beauty, or might be outdoor, might be tools and home improvement. Those are category. So there are, you know tens of thousands of products in a particular category. So this person looks for products with a category sales ranks below 70,000. So that means that's the 70,000th uh, most purchased product in a particular product category. So you might, so those products will sell, but they won't sell too fast. So this, is it, this might be a good strategy for um, for uh, you know a side hustle? So products, are, so there's less competition here. Uh, it's easier to track and replenish your inventory. And uh, uh, like the bullet says here, it's a good strategy. It might be a good strategy to start out. But there are you know there there are literally uh, unlimited strategies that you can use to to find products to sell. So. As I, as I mentioned to you, so so this is a search that I did on Helium Black Box, the 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 Chrome extension. And what I searched on was uh, I searched in the category beauty and personal care. Um, I I searched for low competition. Um, it has you know sliders that you can select the level of competition that you want, um, the price that I wanted to sell the product at. And how much monthly revenue that's generating on Amazon? Uh, and you can do search. You can do all kinds of searches. And these are the these are the products that that came out that came out. So we have. Um, I know it's a little bit hard to read, but here's Lava Lash 500 Premium, and there are. Um, it's got a monthly revenue of about eight thousand a month, um, and um, the price is about. Uh, 31, $31. There, and there are lots of different ways to find potential products. Here's um, looking on eBay. eBay has something called watchcount.com, which uh, you, you can go to and it's free. Um, you can look for popular products on, um, on eBay acquire them and then sell them on Amazon. Um, maybe not acquire them through eBay, but, but at least it give you a, a product idea of what you can, uh, what you can buy. And it, and it may well be something that you could, you could acquire um, on wholesale basis or on, um, you know, private label or various other, uh, various other strategies to acquire. Uh, also on Amazon itself, Amazon will tell you what to sell, best sellers, hot new releases. Um, you can browse department stores. You can 
also uh, browse their websites. Uh, Etsy as well, another, another big marketplace um, has a trending now page, uh, which will tell you, give you, give you other product ideas. <clears throat> you can also look on uh, popular social media sites. Um, nowadays we can program our phones to give us news. So you can, you, you can program your, your phone to give you consumer news about trends or popular products, have them delivered right to your, uh, right to your inbox. Um, you can do searches, um, this is an interesting one. Uh, keeping a touch list. So write down everything you touch for two weeks. Uh, those things that you touch a lot. Maybe you, that that's something that has um, you know that, that that has applicability as a product that you could sell. And also list you know just old fashioned listening to what people around you are talking about. Okay, how do you source these products? Well. Uh, China is a big source of, of products. If you go on Amazon, there's there's any number of of products uh, being sourced from China. Um, Alibaba is a is a very very big, well, it's actually the world's largest B two B portal. Um, there are millions of products there. Um, you have the ability to filter by minimum order quantities, price, availability of samples, etc. There are a lot of lot of um, uh, filtering capabilities. Also, AliExpress, which is uh, maybe for smaller um, minimum order quantities. You could even do a minimum order quantity of one. Uh, AliExpress does B2B and B2C sales as, as well. So if you just wanted to buy, buy a product, you could buy it for your own use. You could buy it on AliExpress. And then there's 1688.com. Uh, that is a very large wholesale sourcing website in China. Uh, content is in Chinese, so you'd have to use Google Translate, but it is it is available and you you can look for products there. Um, there are some, uh, you know, when you're sourcing from China and from other countries, there are some considerations there. And, and certainly we can, you know, we can go over that. Uh, you know, you want to use, obviously, you want to be very careful. Uh, you don't want to pay up front. You want to use a letter of credit. Uh, perhaps use, um, you know, like a, a one third down and then two thirds on successful delivery. Uh, you also want to, um, you know, when you're sourcing from overseas, get samples wherever possible. Make sure that the product meets your your um, quality standards um, before you uh, be, before you purchase it. You can also source from other countries, including, as we mentioned, the United States. Uh, Vietnam is a, a growing uh, manufacturing power. Uh, Taiwan has always uh, has always had a lot of um, manufacturing capability. Uh, Hong Kong. Uh, one thing I want to note here, you know, obviously you can buy this stuff from overseas, and it costs a little less, but Surveys indicate that buyers will pay more for made in USA products. So uh, it, it pays to check out both uh, foreign and, and domestic suppliers. Okay, the second P, I'm just gonna take a sip of water here. Okay, driving traffic to your product listing. So there are a couple of different ways to do that. There's, there's organic, um, promotion and Amazon SEO is uh, is a, a very similar process to how a website operates. Um, there are keywords that you use in your product listing. We're gonna go into that in, in a pretty fair amount of detail. Um, also honest reviews will, will help boost your uh, visibility, increase your sales. And there are also paid uh, paid ways. There's there's a sponsored. Pro if you've been on Amazon as a consumer, you sometimes you see sponsored products, and uh, those are paid uh, promotions to get there for both brand and product. Uh, you can use promo codes and coupons, and uh, automated pricing is is is, uh, is kind of a controversial topic for me. At least uh, I, I I run that around in in my head a lot. We'll 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 get into that a little bit more. Okay, so your your objective as a seller and promoting your product is is to get your listing on page one. 
Uh, buyers rarely look beyond page one for a purchase. I do. I'm the cheapest man in America. So I'm looking for, you know, a lot of times I'm looking, well, who's got a, does somebody have a better price? And I'll, I'll look quite a, quite a ways down sometimes, it, you know, if it's, if it's an inexpensive item, then, then rarely do I, but for a more expensive item, perhaps I, I, I do a little bit more of a search, but for the most part, I mean, statistics say, um, buyers look on the first page, um, there are there are different ways to do that. We've talked about promotion, um, but there's also your sales rank uh, and your velocity that helps you get on page one. So for, for, as an example, uh, if all the sellers on page one sell 23 units a day, then you need to sell 24 units a day for seven days to displace another vendor on, that, on page one. Uh, that, you know, Algorithm, al Amazon's algorithm changes from time to time. So you have to watch that. And uh, Helium's Cerebro product uh, gives you that, that information. Now that's a paid, uh, Helium is a, you know, we mentioned Helium 10 black box. They have a number of different products which are all geared towards selling on Amazon. And, and even in fact, Helium and uh, Alibaba have a have an agreement that to work together where you can use helium to search alibaba's products as well so let's talk about organic seo promotion there are seven parts to uh, amazon seo there are keywords um, product images, product titles, product pricing, descriptions, key features, and backend search keywords. Keywords are one of the most important concepts for doing business on Amazon. Uh, so a keyword is, is a, a word or a phrase that, identif that identifies your product or product classification. And it's a word that buyers are most likely to use to find a product like yours. So when you're doing keyword research, um, the, the, the diagram on, on the right-hand side shows uh, high search volumes versus competition uh, and relevance. So, um, you know, obviously what you'd like to find is something that's a high search volume with low competition, um, but that may, be, that may be hard to find, but definitely you, uh, you, you want to find uh, you want to have keywords in your product listing that a lot of people are using to find the product. You want to get in a, you, you want to get in on that. You don't want to have, you know, some of use, you know, just because there's uh, low competition, you don't want your uh, keywords to be way down here um, in the, in the usage because people aren't going to find, you know, not a whole lot of people are going to be looking for your product using that keyword. And you're going to use keywords in, in your product listings and descriptions, and that, that's going to help customers find you. Uh, you. You also would use them in ads and promotions. So if anybody is familiar with pay-per-click, then um, that, it's, the same, it, it's the same idea. You, you pay for a particular ad word, and when someone clicks on your ad, um, you, you get charged, but they, they, they come to your product listing. Okay, so doing your keyword research, um, there are some free tools. Uh, Google Keyword Planner is free, uh, and that's a pretty good one. Um, but Helium, you know, as I mentioned, Helium 10 also has has that, and it uses Amazon data, which is the you know it's paid, but uh, it actually it uses Amazon data rather than Google data um, to to get the, those keyword searches. Um, and there are a couple of others here, Magnet IQ, Data Dive, and Data Dive is very, very pricey, but it ha does have a free, free, um, free trial. And you can find the best-selling products, analyze the data, fine-tune a keyword list, performs comp competitive analysis. So I guess to some extent, you get what you pay for. I mean, obviously, if you if you just want to find keywords, uh, keyword plan, you know, keyword planner is is pretty is pretty gosh darn good. Uh, and here is a screenshot of Keyword Planner. And what it gives you, <clears throat> excuse me, is a, a set of comprehensive, semantically linked keywords to what you put in. So I, I put 
Um, what did I put in here? So I put in hiking boots uh, and I got back um, this list of keywords and you can see the keyword that that's um, that's being used, uh, the number of searches in the last 30 day period. You can also see the change over time. And this, you know, I, I cut this off. There's also con competitive data and the uh, the price for a PPC bid on a particular uh, on a particular keyword. Um, but that but keyword planner alone gives you some some pretty good information. Now, how are you going to use that? <clears throat> You're going to use that in your product listing, and and we're going to go in the product listing in detail. So. The product listing is a way to, obviously, to describe your product, but also to differentiate your product listing from the competition. Uh, you want to use quality photos. So, so Amazon allows you to use seven photos, and you want to you want to use all of them. Um, the keywords that we talked about, we want you want to have keywords in your title in your text and bullet items. And plus there's something called backend keywords, which are not shown in the product listing, but are listed in your, in, in your metadata in your product listing. And they're also used for search criteria. Uh, how you wanna differentiate your product listing from your competitors is you wanna sell your product, not the product, right? So, so you know, you can talk about, you, you can talk about a, um, I'm, I'm going to go into a, a, an example, so I'll, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll forego that um, for the time being because I think it's, it'll, it'll come up in the next uh, couple of slides. So you want to be um, succinct and compelling in the product listing. So you have the, the capability of a title for your product. Uh, and what you want to have in your title is your brand name, the best two to five keywords that is the most um, relevant two to five keywords for your product, and you want to have your top two to four product benefits. Uh, then you get to put um, your key product features, which are bullet points. Um, they are paragraphs, not less than, not greater than 256 category, um, characters. Um, you want to have formatted as se se sentence fragments, no punctuation at the end, uh, in descending order of importance. And each bullet point, you want to have um, keywords in there as well. Uh, obviously, you want to have honest customer reviews, and you want to make doubly sure that your product listing is mobile friendly. So here is a here here's a product listing, and and as we said, so here's the title, and. At a glance, uh, I actually bought this product from, from uh, Amazon. At a glance is the company name. Um, you see desk calendar, desk pad, which is probably the two, two most popular keywords for looking for this. Uh, and I, I believe when I searched, I used uh, desk pad calendar uh, because I wanted a large calendar that I could use as a desk pad. Um, so, that's what you want to see in your title. Uh, over here, you can see that there are the photos, and these were these were our professionally produced photos. And I would encourage you, if you have the budget, to do that, or if you're a very good photographer, be very careful and take good photos of your product. And then down here, here are the here here's the product description. Couldn't show it all on on one screen, but we'll get into that. In, in a little bit, but this is this is a product listing, and of course, uh, high up on the product listing are your um, customer, essentially your customer uh, reviews and customer satisfaction with your product. So, here's where it gets a little bit more interesting. So, the photos, you you again, I want to stress that you're trying to sell your product, not the product. So the photos are going to help you tell the story about your product. So these are th these are fairly you know fairly descriptive. Um, tells you what the span is, January to December of of the calendar year. Um, what what the size of the block on 
And then you, you start to get into uh, a little bit of detail. So resists ink bleed. Now, when I bought this, I saw that and I said, gee, I didn't even think about that. Um, that's great to know that it's, you know, if I use a, I use a pen, it's not going to, you know, it's not going to bleed into, in, into next month uh, and perforated pages. So here, here are, uh, this is an excerpt from, from their um Uh, yes, uh, I, there there was a this, there was a question in the Q and A. Is the presentation going to be shared? Yes, uh, every everyone is going to get a copy of the uh, of, of the presentation. And again, it it will be it will be posted in its entirety on YouTube. Okay, so th this is the product description. Again, these are um, these these are um, descriptive items about the product. You want to have um, these are each one of these is uh, 256 characters or less. Um, they're, they're descriptive about your product. Um, you want to have again. You want to have keywords in there: schedule, desk pad, um, other information. And now they're selling their product, not just the product. So you can use this product. It's going to keep track of important deadlines, special events, and more with clear organization. You're going to plan your schedule without fear of distracting ink bleeding. There's that whole ink bleeding thing again. Great for long-term planning. Expand your organizational skills with special features. So, so in addition to being descriptive and telling you exactly about their product, they are selling their benefits, not just that it's a desk pad and it's got stuff where you can write stuff down and it has dates and the box, the blocks of those size. There's, there, there's a little, a little bit more to it than, than just the detail. So there's a little salesmanship that goes into, uh, into, into writing these things. Okay. Um, this is one of those things that I, I mentioned I'm going to skip over. So this is steps to adding a product listing. Obvious, it's, it's, it's just a, you know, a, a how to, um, it, it will be in the presentation that you get a copy of. Uh, I don't see that we need to uh, spend a lot of time going over it here. Uh, uh, again, there are lots of ways to promote your product. Your product listing is the main way uh, available to everyone. Doesn't cost you any extra. Um, using keywords and backend keywords, that's going to get people to your listing. Also, pay-per-click advertising, uh, Amazon-sponsored products. That's if you're just introducing something new, maybe that's uh, maybe that's a way to to get um, to get noticed. Um, get Amazon reviews, honest reviews. You can. It's it's Amazon is they're a little ticklish about soliciting reviews but there are ways to uh, there are ways to do that uh, you can also create promo codes and coupons um, you can promote on social media so i have a i have a client that um sells a uh, sells a a, a a kind of a specialized clothing product it's uh, they th their strategy they they have the they have the product uh, manufactured to their specifications here in the u.s uh, they advertise on Google with on Google, so they're advertising on Google AdWords, and then it is pointing people to their uh, to to their um, Amazon site. They did in their second year, they did two million dollars. And if you're lucky enough to to know an influencer or get to be able to get an influencer to uh, or a blogger who promote your product, um, you know, in, in certain instances, if you have a blogger that uh, that's in your you know that's in your product space and will you know will will um, mention your product or list it in their you know if they're on YouTube or whatever or on their blog. They list your product. They get a little. They get um, a, a little bit of a. Uh, they they get a bit, little bit of a commission, but they are you know they're, they they are boosting your product. So that is a that that is a good way to uh, to to increase your product sales or to get uh, visibility into your products. Okay, the third P. Uh, how much should you sell it for? Well, 
this is one strategy. It's called the rule of three. Um, the rule of three is that if it costs you $10 to acquire a product, then you sell it for $30. And the, the, the thinking behind that is, obviously, the first $10 of that $30 goes to buy the product. Uh, the second $10 goes to Amazon for their fees, et cetera, whatever promotion fees, at, um, you know, whatever other costs you have are in that second three. And then your profit is $10. Um, another piece of strategy, I mentioned before briefly that that Amazon has automated pricing, and and what you can do is if a competitor of yours, the same you know the same product, uh, reduces their price, you can Amazon will automatically reduce your price, and you could set per, certain parameters in there. But but essentially, um, <clears throat> my belief is uh, not to engage a race to the bottom. So your price is your your price is your price. If you're selling it properly, if you're promoting it properly, uh, you you are going to you, you're going to get sales. If you if you know obviously, if you feel that um, you need to be a little bit more competitive, you can adjust your price yourself. But uh, I, I I would be I would be wary of of using the of the automated price. Now it is um, you know it might be a consideration for closeouts, right? So so definitely you know you have a few you know. A few products left. You want to get rid of them. Um, make sure that you're, you know, that that you're competitive with everybody else. Um, so when you price something, um, you, you want to consider competition, um, sales, and and rank. And uh, my personal belief is try not to selling it. It's not to sell anything under ten dollars. Now, I say that with a grain of you got to take that with a grain of salt because I sell something on Amazon which is. Two dollars and ninety-five cents, but that's a different that that that's a different story. But, but anyway, um, I would still say that unless you're selling huge volumes, it, it, it's better to sell a product that's a little bit, um, you know, a little a little bit higher in in uh, in in dollar value, and um, you know your your profits will will be a little bit higher than than selling lower priced items. Okay. Um, something about cost to sell on item. Well, you know, we did this. The individual seller plan is ninety nine cents per item sold, um, and the professional seller plan is thirty nine ninety nine a month. Uh, the individual seller plan is ninety nine cents for every item that you sell. So if you sell a thousand items, it's a ninety nine cents times a thousand. What Amazon will so. But if you are on the professional seller plan and you sell a thousand items, they're only going to charge you thirty nine ninety nine for that for that month. Um, there are other costs besides that, as we mentioned before, uh, there are variable closing costs. Um, all sellers pay referral fees. Now those are going to vary by category. So some might be 2%, some might be 8%, some might be even higher than that. Uh, other closing fees, shipping, gift wrapping, those are paid by the seller. There are two ways to fulfill orders, fulfillment by merchant and fulfillment by Amazon. Fulfillment by merchant means you're fulfilling it. So you get an order, you're, get, you're taking the item out of your inventory, packing it in a box, putting a label on it and shipping it. Now, that's, you know, there are other options besides, there, there are, uh, there's something that's called uh, third party logistics, um, that do kind of the same thing as FBA by Amazon. Uh, you send your inventory to them, they do the packing and the shipping, and you pay them a fee for for doing that. But for the most part, for for smaller for smaller sellers, you'll probably be doing that yourself. Now there are some pros and cons to that. Um, obviously, you have full access to your inventory, total control of the fulfillment process. Um, during busy times, it might be favorable to ship yourself and uh, lower fees from Amazon. Um, cons, obviously you got to keep up. Um, 
you know, you are, you're the guy. So, it, you know, if it, if, if it means, uh, you know, spending your weekends uh, shipping out boxes of products, then that's what you have to do when you, when, when people are depending on you to, oops, sorry, when people are depending on you to fulfill. Uh, and it's also uh, much harder to win the buy box. Uh, the buy box is kind of a special promotion uh, that you've probably all seen on, on Amazon. Um, and, you know, when you're doing FBM, it could, you know, you, you, you might need to lower, lower your prices to gain placement on, on the product page. Now, fulfillment by Amazon means that you send all of your inventory to Amazon. Um, you get, um, you put a UPC code on there and there's, you, you can get um, UPC codes for your products from gs1.com. Uh, and that's listed on one of the one one of the slides, so you don't have to worry about writing that down. Um, you ship it all to Amazon, and Amazon does all the fulfillment for you. So they, um, you know, you you that, oh, that's another thing. It's very yeah. Uh, prime status is not automatic. It's much harder to get prime status if you're fulfillment by merchant than it is fulfillment by Amazon, uh, and that that includes free, uh, you know free two-day shipping when you're when when you're prime status eligible um, you can win the buy box easier um, give yourself more time to work on your business more than in your business and uh, you do get economies of scale amazon you know i i, I mean i'm, I'm continually uh, appalled when i go to ups um like if i'm sending something to one of my grandchildren sending them a birthday gift or what have you the the amount of money that it costs to ship one little one one little package, um, but I'm not shipping uh, five million packages a month. So the economies of scale, for Amazon is 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 going to you know obviously it's going to be cost them a little bit less to ship. And and now of course you know we've all seen these uh, or most of us have probably seen these Amazon pr Prime trucks running around. So they're doing their own they're they're doing their own delivery. And again that's um, that's Amazon's investment in, in, in its own business, which is going to, which is going to benefit you. Um, I saw, uh, you know, I saw a funny thing online, um, a, a few weeks back and it was, um, it was a, a couple of different delivery, a couple of different delivery services. And I don't remember it exactly, but it was UPS, FedEx, and and amazon delivering a package so U ups the driver stood about 30 feet away and threw the package at the door uh the fedex guy brought the package up to the door but then jumped on it and then went away and then the uh the the amazon the amazon delivery person uh came up to the door put a put a pillow down on the ground and then put the box on top of the pillow arranged it just so and then and then walked away uh so um, they, they're, they have, a you know, Amazon not only has a, um, tremendous reputation as, um, as, uh, as a seller, but also as a, as a delivery, um, as a delivery, uh, vehicle, they are, they, they are rapidly becoming, um, you know, one of the, one of the best, um, fulfillment centers in, uh, in the, in the country. Um, so again, the cons for doing that, there's additional fees. Um, you have limited access to your inventory. Uh, you can track it through Seller Central, but that's where you're gonna, you know, that's that's your, your entree. You don't see it anymore. Um, product prepping may be required depending on the product that you sell. Um, you, needed, you need to be labeled with UPC codes, et cetera. Um, there is, there is a, a, a stickerless commingled um, option where you don't have to do that, but but <clears throat> what they're doing is commingling the same product type from multiple sellers. And if an order comes in, um, somebody sticks their hand in the bin and pulls one out. Could be yours, could be somebody else's. Um, but you know, you know that it's a it's it's a excuse me, it's a little bit less, and you don't have to do the uh, UPC. Okay, we're we're coming up on. Um, I want to leave some time for questions. Um, there are a couple of different, you know, lots of different business models. Um, retail arbitrage, in other words, you 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 go into a store, you see something, you know, you see a product that that sells 
um, at, at a premium on on Amazon, and you go to that uh, you, you go to that store manager and say, "I want to buy all of these. What what can you do on the on the price?" And you buy the the their entire inventory, and and you sell it on you list it and sell it on Amazon. Online arbitrage is is kind of the same thing. Maybe you go to the Target website. I think the advantage there is probably product selection and and quantities. Uh, there's probably more available online than there would be from in in time in the store. Uh, book arbitrage, uh, same same type of thing. You buy books from somewhere wholesale and resell them on Amazon. Um, you can buy products wholesale. I think uh, you know, something uh, as an example. Omicron makes uh, Omicron is a company that makes uh, blood pressure machines, and they will sell them wholesale. And you'll see a lot of sellers selling those on on, on Amazon. Uh, now you can you can do that. You can you can also buy a wholesale product and perhaps add a customization, which which uh, makes you a, a little bit unique in in that uh, in in that product area. Uh, print on demand is is uh, is is a little bit different. Uh, you know, t-shirts, mugs, those types of things. So, um, um, and and basically, um, you're just doing the ordering on that. You do the design. Um, it gets printed. It gets printed uh, at Amazon and and delivered from there. And then a private label. Uh, I have another client who uh, does uh, works in the uh, uh, health and beauty space. Um, he has um experience in that he's worked in that in that industry uh he went to a manufacturer had a product made to his specification uh with his label and he resells that on he resells that on amazon so lots of different um, business models and, and amazon is an is an ecosystem unto itself so for instance you know you, you don't have to sell on amazon you can deliver for amazon you can you could create you you could start your own delivery local delivery business for amazon and there're lots of different opportunities uh there and i have a, a reference uh, that that will give you a bit later uh in summary amazon's the number one website in the world it's still growing um as we mentioned seller central is your portal to manage your amazon relationship uh, there's proprietary and third-party tools to manage your business when you start working on Amazon. Um, the three P's to success, product, product selection, product positioning, and product pricing. And SCORE is here to help you on your journey. So if you, you, know, if you have questions after this, uh, you want someone to help you get started uh, with operating a business on Amazon, we are, we are here to help you. Uh, a couple of other resources. Um, that you might want to check out, and and again, this will be in the uh, uh, in the slide deck. Uh, what I want to call your attention to is uh, 38 businesses that used uh, Amazon to grow. So there's a couple of different uh, ideas of for, of businesses that have uh, used Amazon, and um, there are probably other other guides that talk about other um business opportunities on on amazon selling on both selling on amazon and then the amazon ecosystem as a whole okay uh any questions if you have questions please type them into the chat i know we went through a lot of stuff here uh it is a as, as i mentioned it is a it is a pretty broad topic um, believe it or not, we, we, we really, we really, uh, scratched the surface here and there's, there's quite, quite, a, you know, obviously quite a bit more you can delve into, uh, into any, any one of those areas, uh, in, in, in a lot more detail, especially, you know, product selection, product sourcing, those, those are, those, those are big topics, um, and, uh, would, re, would, um, you know, obviously re require a, a little bit more, uh, research on on your part uh, to to become proficient. Um, like anything else, you know, it, it is it's not a get rich quick scheme. It is a it is a business. Um, there are you know there are ways to be successful, but uh, lots of people are are being successful. Uh, uh, we have a question in the chat. What amount of investment is recommended for products to start? Uh, and, and again you know that's there is no simple answer to that uh you know just to to give you to give you an idea of of scale 
um, you know, I, I was in uh, I was in Walgreens uh, a, a few weeks ago and they had a, uh, you know, it was just by the pharmacy and they had they had a rack and it had um, all of these books. And there were about 50 books of, um, you know, um, places to go in, in in New Jersey. So you can buy, you know, you can go to the store manager, like I said before, and say, Hey, you know, I want to buy all 50 of these, you know, can you give me a, you know, give me a better price and then you can resell them on Amazon. So your investment there is basically, um, you, you know, a hundred, a hundred, 200, 300 bucks for those books and the amount that it takes to get started on, on Amazon with your, with your seller account. And, uh, you can get, you, you can get started selling, um, all the way to, I have, I have yet another client who, um, who create uh, who did a, a he didn't create a building product it, it is a diy building product which he made some improvements to contracted for someone in china to to build that and and ship it to him but then his investment was quite a bit higher i think his initial order was somewhere in the twenty thousand dollar range so so it, it it can it can really vary and varies a lot with the, the types of products if you're selling vintage clothing um, you know, go to secondhand stores, buy some vintage clothing and, and list it on Amazon. So really it is. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, I, ho I hope that answers your question. I know it's a very it, it's it's, you know, you know, obviously a very general answer, but it, it really is. You know, you come up with the business idea and then you you can work through the work through the money. Um, is the UPC code same as the SKU code? It's the same idea. It's a, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a barcode that's going to be put on the product and you get that from GS1.com. Uh, you put it on your product and that's what Amazon uses to identify your product and, you know, to, and to sell it. Um, and uh, so it's the same idea as a, as a SKU. Uh, I think SKUs uh, generally are are company uh, are company related. Since Amazon is doing, you know, it, it's getting getting um, products from so many different sources that it's that it's global to Amazon. Uh, okay, Carrie Ann, you are quite welcome. I uh, hope you enjoyed the presentation and uh, we're able to get something out of it. I'm going to check on. I see some some uh, questions in the Q and A. I'm going to go over there. Uh, commission Amazon charges on sales by Antonio. Um, that it, it varies, Antonio. Um, so there, you know, when you go on Amazon, there there is a, a list of product categories, and they sell by by product category. And it could be, you know, it it could be eight percent for one product category. It could be fourteen percent for another product. But you have to you but you have to watch that. So that's going to be their uh, their commission. Um, and Tracy, can you talk about what classifies as hazardous? Uh, well, alcohol, fire, uh, firearms, and tobacco is all considered uh, hazardous on on uh, on Amazon. But uh, again, they list you know when, when you when you go on Amazon uh, seller through Seller Central or you know down at the bottom, um, they they. They list explicitly what all the um, what what all the products uh, that are that are classified as as hazardous hazardous and uh, ones that you can't sell on Amazon. And um, I think also there are some other things, baby products. You, you have to jump through a couple a couple of additional hoops to sell baby products. Now, baby products is, is a huge um, a huge um, category on Amazon, but obviously there are, you know, there are safety issues, uh, special safety issues when dealing with, with babies. Uh, so there are a couple of extra hoops, not that you can't sell it, but there are a couple of extra hoops that you have to jump through there. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Uh, in addition to commission, anything else to watch for? Um, well, you, I, I think that's, you know, those are, you know, that, that those those are the big items that you're that you're going to deal with. Uh, I, I mean, you know, you, you, if you're going to do if if you're going to do FBA, um, 
you know you have to you have to watch out there and if you're going to be in prime obviously you have to you, you have to understand what they're going to do with the uh with with the um delivery charges with the shipping charges uh if if you're prime right because they're offering free shipping for prime products um, that's going to be shared in some way uh, the, uh, so um there's another so from bernardino um do i have to pay shipping to amazon or amazon pays for it the, the answer is the the um you know, it's a little bit different for free shipping if you're qualified for Prime. But again, you know, you have that that's going to change from time to time. You just have to understand what those charges are. But for the most part, if you're not Prime and you're charging shipping, the customer is going to pay for shipping and for gift wrap and for other things of that nature. So that's all going to be, you know, that's that's all going, you know, when when Amazon, uh, you know, nets all that out and puts they're they're going to collect the shipping from the customer and they're going to put that in your uh, in your account. Any other questions? Okay, well, that's amazing. We made that in just a little bit. Oh, okay. What what uh do you have to pay shipping to Amazon or Amazon pays for it if you have the product on if I have the product on hand? So that would be if you have the product on hand, that would be uh fulfillment by merchant. So basically what you what you would want to do, well you you know, so so you um put the shipping charge, you have to know what that's gonna cost to 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 ship. And there are you know various tools to to do that. But you know, when the customer is charged, they're gonna be charged for the product plus shipping. Amazon's going to collect that and they're going to reimburse you for the shipping that you said you were going you were you were going to charge. Uh, if it's FBA, um, again, the customer is going to pay for that shipping if it's not prime. But since Amazon is paying is in that case paying for the shipping, they are going to um, they're they're going to. So it's a little, you know, it's just just a little bit to understand. So you get your your account gets credited for the entire amount of the sale plus the shipping then amazon deducts their their shipping because you didn't uh, because um you're not getting reimbursed for that amazon is getting reimbursed and of course they take out their commissions i, I hope that's clear if you if I, if i'm not answering your question just just let me know And what I mean if I want to use FBA. So FBA means that you ship your products to Amazon and Amazon ships it out and they take care of all the, the shipping costs and et cetera. But they're going to add the shipping cost onto the uh, onto the product and the customer is going to pay that. But Amazon is going to get reimbursed for the cut for the shipping as opposed to you getting reimbursed for the shipping when it's FBM. You, and if you want to send your products to them, then it's FBA. Okay, uh, we're a little bit over an hour. Um, I'm kind of glad that you know, happy that we that we were able to get through it all. Uh, I know I had to go through it quickly. So again, uh, you know. I, I put my email address in the chat. My email address is uh, is on the presentation, which you will uh, you will get a copy. And of course, I'll be emailing that to you, so you have my you'll have my email address when you get the copy of the presentation. So if you have questions subsequently, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, if you want more help than that, if you would like uh, you know if you would like a mentor um, to help you get started with this, again. Um, all you all you have to do is is ask. It, it's free, uh, and uh, it's it's at mutual con it's at mutual convenience. Whatever whatever help you need for as long as you need it, um, you can get that through Score. So uh, thank you all very much for attending. Uh, I appreciate your um, appreciate your 
your uh, patience and uh, and perseverance as we went through this. I hope uh, I hope you found it uh, uh, interesting and informative, and hopefully uh, maybe we started a couple of people on their journey towards uh, selling on Amazon. Thank you, thank you all very much.